In this problem, we're trying to find the value of h, which makes this system in equilibrium. So what we're really actually doing is trying to find this angle right here. Um, I'm gonna use some light green or something of that nature. We're trying to find this angle, theta, so that we could use this right triangle to find uh, this value of h. And we're given the value of d, which is 600 millimeters. But the only way we could find this angle is actually looking at, at the forces acting in these cables. So I'm gonna define these cables, um, or define these pulleys or pivots or whatever you want to call them as a b and c and one thing to note that this angle equals that angle because this is h this is h this is d this is d this is d this is d so these triangles these right triangles are the same so they must have the same angle so um, that is very important to know so the first thing we're going to do we're going to look at the free body diagram of the point that is right here so the basic idea as we did before we're going to cut the rope right here and right here and right here and we're going to look at that point so if you look at that point um we'll probably call it b so we could draw the free body diagram so the force going downward is just p the force going this way is the tension cable a b so that's t a b and the angle that acts upon it is theta and then we're going to do the same thing over here. So tension in this cable is tension, or T, B, C. And that it acts at the same angle. So there's one problem. We don't know the value of T, B, C, or T, A, B. And uh, the one way that we can find that is actually look at the free body diagram of this particle. So as we learned before, that tension like travel it travels through the rope. So this tension TBC actually acts all the way through up to this body. So we could define this body or this particle as this. So we could say this is the weight of the particle and this is the tension going upward. So this would be TBC. So now that we have those defined, we could analyze the forces that are acting upon them. So this will be actually this will be free body diagram one, free body diagram two. So we can do the free body diagram of the sum of the forces. So this, will, this is only acting in the y. And I forgot to define my coordinate system again. So this will be y and x. It will always be a right-hand coordinate system. So this is the sum of forces in the y. So we get t, b, c minus w equals 0. And that gives us that w equals t, b, c. So that's very useful to know because we could use this value for this free body diagram. So we could do the free body diagram of system two. So this will be some of the forces in the x direction. So we get um, positive TBC cosine theta minus TAB cosine theta equals zero since P only acts in the y direction. So what we get here is TBC cosine theta equals TAB cosine theta. And by canceling out cosines on each side of the equation, we could say that TBC equals TAB. And by the transitive property, we could say by the, that these forces equal the weight of W. So that is very important, because now we could actually use the forces in the y direction of the free body diagram too to find um, to find the angle that acts upon them. So we could say that f of y, so we could say that TAB sine theta plus TBC sine theta minus P equals zero. And we, as we defined earlier, TBC equals TAB, which equals W. So we could simplify this to say two, um, two W sine theta equals P. And now we could find the angle simply by doing some arc tangent stuff or arc sine um, stuff, not arc tangent. So we could say arc sine of P over 2W. And if we plug in some values, So based on my calculator, uh, we get an angle of 7.1881 degrees. So we could define that. 
now that we have the angle um, theta, we could find this height by using some simple trig. So I'm going to do that right here, so we don't have to. So we can look at it. So we have this triangle H, and we have this uh, length D, and we have this angle theta. So by using trig, so the tangent of theta is equal to H over D, and that implies that H equals D tangent theta. So we can plug in some numbers. Uh, D is in millimeters, so we can keep that as millimeters. That is fine. So that'd be 600 times the tangent of seven. What was it? 7.181 degrees. So what we get is that H equals 75.593 millimeters. So that is the value of H that determines this uh, system being at equilibrium. So one important thing about this problem is the idea of using multiple free body diagrams. So we cut up this rope, these three different tensions, these tension forces, and we applied it to one bot free body diagram. And then we realized there's a relationship between this tension and this cable with this tension or with this tension acting on to W. So we applied a free body diagram to this box. And we solved for um, TBC and we found that it equals to the weight of the box. Now this might be intuitive, but if for more complicated more complicated problems, this is not sometimes it's not that obvious. So you have to apply several different free body diagrams to find TBC in this case. So yeah, you could have guessed that the weight force applies is equal to the tension force, and you could uh, skip this step completely and just assume that TBC equals W. So. But again, if you didn't understand why that was true or why it wasn't or why it was obvious, then you could just apply the this very concept of several different free body diagrams.